Hi there, it's Cheryl Lee from Anatomy for the People. This video is a little bit different. I'm not cooped up in a dark, dingy room and I'm in the light, which is really pleasant. Today, I'm going to be talking about planes of section. And to help me describe them, I've created something very terrifying, which I would like to show you. I have used the play-doh that causes great anxiety to people where you can see all of the different colors mixed together so rather than me just burning it and throwing it into a ditch uh, i've made something equally as terrifying for you today so here i've created the perfect individual uh, in the anatomical position yes he is missing a pupil on the left that is not what's important here so he's in anatomical position. We have the individual standing upright with the upper limbs by the side with the palms facing forward. And you can see I put the little thumbs there laterally, the creepy little thumbs there. We can see that the thighs and the legs are also standing upright with the feet facing forward about a shoulder width apart. Okay, so the reason why we talk about planes of section is because it's really important when it comes to imaging, examination of those images, and also within your anatomy and physiology textbooks, you will see cuts of different anatomical parts, and it's really important to know in what plane you are viewing that image in. Because obviously, if you are looking at a view of the abdomen that is being cut across like this, versus if it's been cut in this longitudinal way, you're going to see different structures. So there are three main planes of section. However, there is a fourth, though it is not as common as the other three. So let's start with the sagittal plane. So this sagittal plane is all about separating the body into left and right sections. So the midline, which is the line that runs down the middle of the body here, would be the mid sagittal plane. I do have a knife here, but it looks incredibly terrifying. And if this video does well at Halloween time, look, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh um, my goodness me. Uh, so the mid sagittal plane would be a cut that runs right through the middle there. So you can also have sagittal cuts, which are away from the midline. So from here, all the way out this way, and then all the way out that way, chop, 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 like that. And so that would be a parasagittal plane. So para means alongside. So you'll have these parasagittal cuts alongside the midsagittal plane. Then you also have the transverse plane or the horizontal plane. And so that will come across like this. Chop, 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 chop like that. So what that does is that separates the body into superior and inferior parts or upper and lower parts. But when we're talking about the limbs, so the upper limbs and the lower limbs, a cut like that across would be separating distal and proximal halves. The third plane that we have is the coronal plane. And so that is about separating the body into anterior and posterior sections. So if we turn our little blue man like this, a coronal cut would be in this plane, separating anterior and posterior. And then lastly, we have an oblique plane. So as this name suggests, that would be a diagonal cut. So as I said before earlier, it's not as common. However, a cut like that or an image like that could be made to ensure that certain anatomical structures are in that image. So that would be cutting like this. And that would be perpendicular to the other planes described before. So like this, like that, and so forth. Okay, so that's the anatomical planes. Remember the three main ones, which are your sagittal, your coronal, and your horizontal or your transverse. And the fourth one is the oblique plane. I hope that you've enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye.